a beautiful finish for our fancy pencil holder that can be applied to any project. Let's pop the grain. Now you've probably noticed by now that the maple that we're using is pretty nicely figured. It's got some good curl in there. And for those of you who aren't familiar with figured wood, it basically is sort of a wild grain pattern that allows a little bit of an end grain exposure and sort of a regular pattern. Okay, and if that's end grain, what do we know about end grain? It tends to absorb materials faster and it tends to be more thirsty, let's say. So we can actually take advantage of that to pop the grain, is what it's usually referred to as. Uh, you could just put a, a coat of oil on this or a coat of varnish and it's gonna look great, but I think we can do one step better to really make this thing just <clears throat> kablam! So let's go hunt down our secret ingredients. You come with me. All right. I think we could use some shellac. Bullseye seal coat. How about some coloring agent? That could work. That's for water. That's vintage maple trans tint. That sounds good. And Dixie cup. And top coat afterwards. There we go. I place about seven or eight drops of trans tint dye into the cup. Then I fill the cup about halfway with shellac and mix well. We don't need a whole lot of material for this small, tiny project. I use a folded up paper towel to apply the dye. Apply liberally to the surface and notice how the wild grain pattern becomes even more noticeable as the dye settles in. Coat the entire surface, including the base, and that small amount of dye in the mixture won't really affect the color of the Hotoba. Then I carefully coat the top edge, but I'm not too concerned about the inside at this point. If you're up to it, feel free to apply the dye there too. When the workpiece doesn't feel cool, wet, or tacky anymore, it's ready for the sanding. That's usually about an hour or two in my shop. I use 220 grit paper to sand pretty aggressively, and this is where the magic happens. Remember how I said that the odd grain lines are actually end grain? Well because of that, these stripes have absorbed more dye and absorbed it more deeply than the other parts of the wood. So with a little sanding, we can remove all the dye from the long grain while leaving dye in the end grain. And this creates a striking contrast, and it's what we affectionately refer to as popping the grain. After sanding, I blow off the dust with compressed air. Now it's time for the varnish. Although you could use just about any finish you want at this point, few finishes will add the beauty and the chatoyance that we'll see from an oil-based product. See what I mean? I coat the entire pencil holder inside and out. Let it soak in and then wipe off the excess with a clean rag. Three to four coats applied with a 320 grit sanding in between will yield a close to the wood finish that just can't be beat. Now just for fun, I made a couple of test pieces to demonstrate the difference that a single coat of dye can make. The board on the left received a varnish top coat only. The board on the right, however, received the exact same treatment that I showed you today. Notice that we're not really changing the color of the wood, we're just intensifying the figure. A little know-how and a little extra effort can yield remarkable results.